All right, welcome back to another video here. Uh, this particular lesson, we're going to look at limiting and excess reactants. I figured the what might be helpful is if we just stick with the same theme, and I'm going to, I'm going to show you that we can use the the very basic reaction we use um, in one of our very first lab uh, wet labs. That we can use it to understand almost anything we're going to be doing um, in chemistry. So first of all, limiting and excess reactants. So we know what reactants are. If we understand the concept of limiting, we mean that uh, it, uh, if you limit something, you're almost controlling it. There's there's no more than that can be used or done. So if, if you're cooking something, if you limit the amount of ingredients you put in the bowl to mix, then you you limit the amount of cookies you can produce the amount of cake that's going to be made, the amount of you know whatever the, the amount of the omelet. It doesn't matter what you're making, and then you also understand excess means more than what is needed. So when you're cooking, you sometimes have ingredients left over, and you realize, well, I have an excess of these, and if I had more stuff, I could use it. But because I don't have enough of the other ingredient, the limiting ingredient. I have an excess of this other ingredient. Well, the same is true here in chemistry. In a chemical e reaction, once you write the equation, when you have you, you have both a limiting and an excess reactant, when uh, when these things are when the re when the reaction happens. So let's just go back to the very first reaction we've ever really looked at. It's a very basic reaction: the sodium bicarbonate, and that's a solid. And then remember, we've got our concentrated, concentrated hydrochloric acid. A reaction happens. And remember, bicarbonate, when it undergoes a reaction, breaks down into carbon dioxide, water. And then here, you would be left with sodium chloride. Remember, we've already discussed this. So none of this is new. And of course, until we heat that water off, it would be an aqueous form. So let's think. Let's uh, let, let's 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 think about this. Let's just say that you, I, I tell you to use two grams of this particular stuff here, and then I tell you to use um, ten milliliters of this acid. The question is. How much of this product can be made? So, in the previous, the previous time we did this, we knew how much of this we started with, and we did not exactly measure this right here. We just kept adding it until it stopped. So, what you what you weren't thinking about was when you were doing this is you were adding just the right amount to where you really didn't have any excess. So right now what we want to, but with these set amounts, what we want to figure out is, is 2 grams the proper amount or is 10 milliliters the proper amount and which of these is the limiting reactant and which is the excess reactant. So, and from that lab, we could directly measure how much salt. So the way that you figure, figure this out is we do the stoichiometry for just this part right here for the sodium bicarbonate, two grams of this, we go grams to moles, moles of this to moles of the salt, moles to grams. We do the exact same thing again with this reactant. We have to convert the amount of this reactant into this right here. So let's go, let's, let's do this. All right, so we've got two grams of sodium bicarbonate. All right. From the previous lesson, we saw that there were 80. Wow, that's really hard to see, isn't it? That's... We'll try that again. Here we go. 84. Point. Sorry about that. Sorry about that, I'm doing multiple things at the same time, so uh, my apologies. So 
we saw that that was 84.01. And now let me just double check before I do this again. So sodium is 22.99 plus 1.01 for the hydrogen plus 12.01 for the carbon plus we've got 16 times 3. Yep, 84.01. That's correct. Oops, sorry, I dropped my calculator. Sorry about that. So, of course, that is, oops, that is grams of sodium bicarbonate. And, of course, that would be for every one mole of sodium. Well, I got that backwards. Bear with me. Sometimes... This is what happens sometimes if you're rushing. So notice that unit, that unit crosses out. This you, you, Basically you're doing the same math that we've always done. The only thing for limiting an excess reactant is, is when we're done with the math, we're just going to interpret our numbers a little bit differently. That's it. But the math is exactly the same. There is nothing new here. So we've gone grams to moles. Now we're going to compare moles of this to moles of this. So there's the coefficients in front is one. So there's one mole of sodium bicarbonate for every one mole of sodium chloride. Same unit on top and bottom, cancels out. And one mole of sodium chloride we know is 58.44 grams of sodium chloride. All right. So let's do some math here. Through this, we've got 58.44 times 2. That's divided by 84.01. So that gives us 1.39126. Um, you just need some extra numbers. So we can evaluate our answer. Three significant digits here, 2.00 is three, so one, two, three. This one will not round that up. So we're looking at about 1.39 grams of sodium chloride. That's what the math is telling us. However, we did add an exactly 10 milliliters of hydrochloric acid. So now what we've got to do is we've got to, we've got to figure out if we have 10, excuse me, if we have... 10 milliliters of this, would we get 1.39? Would we get more? Would we get less? That's what we have to know before we can decide which of these is the limiting, which is the excess reactant. So let's just, so just a quick note, I need you to understand this. Let's just say that this right here said 10 grams. Okay, the math we would do would be the same thing. We'd put 10 grams HCl. And we would do all the stoichiometry all the way across until we got a number, and then we would compare our numbers. Okay? So there's a lot of reactions where you have a solid here, and then you have another solid thing here that's mixed together. And so you could you do the math exactly the same. However, here, this, remember, this is an aqueous form. Since it's an aqueous form, that means we have a solution. When you have a solution, that means you're dealing with molarity. Okay, And from this lab, the lab that we did, so I'm going to use that in this example here, we know that we were using a 3 molar hydrochloric acid solution. So what we have to do is figure out from this concentration with this volume of stuff, how much of this product would be made. Because if you think about it, the reason we have to do this, chlorine is here, chlorine is here in this reactant. There's also sodium here, and then there's sodium in this one here. So both of these are contributing to this one product. And that's why we have to do the math for both of these to figure out which one of these is limiting how much is combined to make this, okay? So here now, since we're dealing with solution, we're dealing with molarity, that means we have to come down and we have to do some, some other math first. So we need the molarity equation. 
So we know molarity is moles of solute per liters of solution. And remember, this is on your equation reference sheet, so no big deal. All right. So let's let's think about this for a second. What have we been given? Well, our given is three molar hydrochloric acid. Our volume is ten milliliters. Is the volume. And this is our molarity. Well, if you think about it, molarity, check, it's right there. Milliliters is the unit of measurement for volume. Liters of solution, that is our volume. So if you think about it, the only thing that we're missing is that part right there, moles of solute. So what we do is, is we need to rearrange this equation here. to solve for the missing equation. So, to solve for the missing variable. So that would be moles of solute would equal molarity times liters of solution. Okay. All right. What's our molarity? Our molarity is 3 molar hydrochloric acid times liters of solution. So now remember, all right, let's remember that it says liters of solution. This is milliliters. So we're going to have to convert 10 milliliters into liters. So remember, there's 1,000 milliliters for every one liter. That unit crosses out and so all right you should be able to do this in your head but if 10 divided by 1 1 2 3 you should see on your calculator 0 0.01 all right you should see 0 0.01 and of course the unit is still liters so we got 0 0.01 liters correct correct now, let's think about this for a second. It, I can multiply three times this number and I can get something that is not a problem. But when we're done, we have to be left with just that unit right there. We have to be left with just that unit right there. So now, let me, I'm gonna get rid of something here so this might be a little less confusing for you. Because it doesn't matter if it's hydrochloric acid or Coca-Cola. It doesn't matter. This right here, capital M, is that capital M right there. So that means that this entire unit is all of this. So we can rewrite this as 3 moles per 1 liter. Because any number by itself. So when, I, when, when you've got this... That's really that over that, over one. It's just that we ones are understood. So all I did was take this molarity unit and break it down into its parts, which is moles per liter. Moles per liter. So now I can multiply the numbers. And you should see that liters on bottom and top cancel out. So now we've got 3 times 0 0.01 and you should see in the calculator 0 0.03 and then that is moles. All right, so let's go back up here. We've now figured out, and I'm going to put this in parentheses, we've now figured out this, this is 0 0.03 moles. All right. Now, what we can do is this. I'm going to come over here, and I'm going to move this out of the way. All right. I'm just going to move this down. Okay. Because 
I want to keep everything together that is the same. Now that we know that we have that we've got this many moles of this, we can come over here and do some stoichiometry. 0 0.03 moles of hydrochloric acid. So instead of starting out with grams, we're already in moles. Oops, that was not a straight line. A little bit better. So the question is, is what's the ratio of moles of hydrochloric acid to moles of sodium chloride? Okay. Well, there's a coefficient of 1. There's a coefficient of 1. It's a ratio of 1 to 1. Moles of hydrochloric acid, moles of hydrochloric acid. Those units go away. So now we can convert moles of sodium chloride into grams of sodium chloride. So that's 58.44 that we've already figured out, right? And that is a 4. Remember, that is a 4. So let's go to our calculator. 58.44 times 0 0.03. That is 1.7532. And then on the bottom, it's all 1s. So essentially, we know that this is 1.75 three two and that is grams sodium chloride so up here we use three significant digits so let's look at this 1.75 grams sodium chloride now i know that number is similar to the previous number we had on another problem but it it doesn't make a difference it doesn't matter it so happens to be similar now this is what you do to to figure out your limiting and excess reactant, you take a look at these two values and you compare them. Compare the values. Make, a self, make yourself a note. The lower value is the expected yield. Okay. And the lower value will also identify the limiting reactant. Always. 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 So what that means is this. 1.39 gram sodium chloride, gram sodium chloride. Since the units are the same, we can compare them. 1.39 is lower, is, is a lesser value than 1.75. So the final answer, since 1.39 grams is less than 1.75 grams sodium chloride, then in this case right here, the 1.39 identifies then the sodium bicarbonate equals our limiting reactant. That means if this is if the sodium bicarbonate is our limiting reactant, the hydrochloric acid is our excess reactant. So this one is our limiting reactant, and this one is our excess reactant. And I'm just writing those in abbreviations. It's not typically what you do, but I'm just doing it just for training purposes. And that is it. Now from this, so what you would do in a, in a lab situation now is you would take a look at this and you would, ex, you would now expect that if you had no error that you should get 1.39 grams of sodium, uh, of sodium chloride if you had no error. So this is your expected yield and whatever you get you would compare to the 1.39. All right, hope that helped. Rewind, pause, stop, take notes, do what you need to do over and over again. And just know that this, this, this procedure here, this step here, this is how you do this every single time for a limiting reactant problem. All right, study, take care, good luck.